On today's episode, we're going to talk about Moon Knight, the most recent offering from the amazing people at Marvel and Disney. And yeah, it's a thing that happened all right, that's for sure. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Way of the Dad podcast, where we fearlessly dive into the depths of dadness. If you like what you are hearing, please share the podcast and give it a review on the platform where you listen. Thank you. Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, This is one that, man, I've been, I've been really going back and forth about what I want to do with this review or discussion. And I'll be honest with you, it's going to have spoilers in it because I don't give a damn. I'll be honest. I know that I've made some uh, episodes before talking about the bait and switch, uh, which was the you know pretty recent one that uh, MCU and and Star Wars are doing a lot of, telling you it's about this character and actually making it about another character. If you've listened to this podcast, you know I'm not a big fan of Captain Marvel because it was just not a very good movie and the acting was wooden. And Brie Larson basically has like two modes, condescending and angry, as opposed to being a full-fledged human being acting like a full-fledged human being with a an, an array of emotions. So, full disclosure, and I think I've said this before, I'm not a, you know, Moon Knight fan since I was five years old or anything like that. I discovered Moon Knight basically when I realized that uh, my local library had uh, comic books, uh, these big collections of comics, so like they would be Issues one through six all collected together in a single paperback. I can't remember the name for it. So that's how I discovered Moon Knight. And I was fascinated with the character because of the multiple personalities. The Is what I'm even seeing, is that real or is that in his head? You know, so pretty interesting uh, character. So I don't even know what to say about this dumbass show. This show... The longer I've gotten away from it, the less I like it. I mean, it's got like a plummeting uh, residual value, if you want to call it that, in my brain. I mean, I'll be honest right off the bat, I wasn't a big fan of the fact that they were making the Stephen Grant personality basically the the most wussified, uh, spineless, mealy mouth character I've I mean it's almost so much that you can't believe that person could actually survive in life to middle age you know but I got but I but I you know I kind of made made my peace with that and it's like okay well I see here they're doing we're definitely going yin and yang right okay fine you know and the first two episodes are pretty intriguing I'll give that they are they're very intriguing uh the re- the premise is really good because you're really trying to figure out like okay what the hell's going on here, what's happening, and of course you kind of know a little bit if you know Moon Knight, but you still don't really know where the show's going because it's not following say like a particular comic run perfectly or anything like that. That's fine. And then I was really excited for the Mister Knight reveal. So you have Moon Knight, who's the kind of the one version of the Avatar. Then there's the Mr. Knight version. The Moon Knight is more flat-out brutal, kind of 
not in a dumb way, but a bull in a china shop as far as he's just going to, he's just going to go in and wreck things. Okay. Mr. Knight was more of a, let's call it the Batman persona in the sense of he liaised with the cops. He would help them solve, you know, killings and serial killing, serial killer cases, things like that. He was no less brutal or bloody, really, but he was much more surgical. Let's call it that, tactical and surgical. Measured. And when they finally revealed Mr. Knight, again, the show did something else beyond the source material that I'm aware of anyway. Maybe there's a super amazing run of comics that I missed. But they made the Mr. Knight version an avatar of Steven. So like when Steven is in control, Mr. Knight is the moon is the version of Moon Knight we see. Whereas when Mark is in control, Moon Knight is that like the original Moon Knight is the version. And uh, it's so painful. They took Mr. Knight and made him just as pathetic and and useless as Steven is. In real like in his normal regular persona. It's like a one-to-one transfer, okay? <laughs> it's 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 really, I just, I'm really struggling with this, and I, I'm sure that's coming through, but I wanted to like this. I really did. You know, this is yet another show that starts with an interesting premise, and it stumbles and bumbles, and, and you know, towards the end, and then, I hate to say it, and I know this is funny because, you know, Amber Heard's in the news, but it literally shits the bed in the ending. You know, they were talking about how, oh, this show's going to be so much darker. Oh, this is going to be so dark for the MCU. We're going to the dark places. Even, like, referencing, you know, like, Daredevil. Talking about how dark this is going to be. As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to use that Will Smith reference. Keep Daredevil's name out your mouth. This show couldn't hold Daredevil's jockstrap. It's an insult to put Daredevil and Moon Knight in the same conversation as far as their shows go. This show isn't that dark. I mean, like, after the first couple episodes, it's it's like it gives up the goat, the premise is totally blown, and it's no longer scary, it's just goofy and weird. And that can be good okay, that can be okay on its own, but dark? No, it's not dark. The show's not dark. It's a standard MCU show. It is. It's so standard. There's too much humor, and 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 to the point where it becomes detrimental to the story, to this super serious story that I'm supposed to take as super serious. Oh, the threat of Amit is super serious, but but you didn't treat Mark, Stephen, Moon Knight, Mister Knight. You didn't treat them seriously enough. And, and and then then to sit here and throw the name Daredevil around like that like you you've just created you've almost guaranteed that I won't like this show because it's not even kind of like Daredevil. First of all, it's nowhere near as dark, serious, and realistic. It's not even close. Then on top of that, you have all this goofball slapstick bullshit humor in there that you throw in, and I don't know what that's supposed to do for me. You make you make Stephen Grant. A literal joke. That personality in the comics is basically the Bruce Wayne type of personality. And I, I hate to use the Batman references because Moon Knight is not Marvel's Batman. But, of course, there are some things that you can find as comparable. Stephen Grant was the billionaire playboy who would schmooze, get in with the upper elite. Of course, sometimes those people were bad. But he would do it on purpose to get in with them and party with them and Get invited, backdoor access to things, find out who's really doing what, where's the money coming from, things like that, right? And of course, he would, you know, enjoy his time as a <laughs> billionaire playboy. But they turn the Stephen Grant personality into an absolute joke. And the Mr. Knight personality literally only becomes competent right at the end. And it's still kind of a joke because you know it's still... Steven. Okay, he learned how to use the billy clubs. Great. But it was too little too late. Moon Knight didn't get dark. It got, like, Disney dark. Uh, that's what I'm going to call it. It's it's Disney dark. Moon Knight should have been on Hulu. 
they should have put all the Netflix, former Netflix shows like Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, uh, Defenders, Punisher. They should have moved all that to Hulu, where it belongs to be properly dark. And they should have made Moon Knight on Hulu. And they should have left it in people's hands who are properly good at this. Basically, whoever ran Daredevil, uh, Stephen DeKnight, and uh, I can't remember who else. There was, there was a couple show owners. Those, those should have been in charge. But if they were in charge, we wouldn't have gotten the stunning and brave things that we got in this show. Because did you really think that Mark Spector or Stephen Grant or the, or the, the, the two of them, so to speak, working together... Did you really think that they were going to defeat Amit all by themselves? Well, of course not, dear listener. You silly goose. You should know better. They needed a stunning and brave partner to help them. Actually, I mean, not help them. Tell them what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And, of course, save their ass. And that's where we get the Scarlet Scarab or Red Scarab Layla. You know, this character I'm supposed to... And, and nothing against this actress. I, I, I don't think anybody had good material to work with. So let me get that out of the way real fast. Oscar Isaac is a phenomenal actor. And I know this because he made his portrayal of Mark Spector and Stephen Grant interesting. Considering the fact that he literally got a steaming pile of shit for a script. And still made it somewhat interesting and unique. And the way he flipped between the personalities was really cool and all that stuff. He elevated that mediocre crap. No, I'm sorry. It's not. He elevated that dung pile of a script. But Layla's character is pretty damn hollow. Yeah, she's, you know, wants to find out who killed her dad. Okay, great. I've never heard that before. In a comic book movie, you know, or a comic book show. That's a trope. Someone needs to find out who killed their dad, and it drives them to whatever. But somehow, Layla is always awesome. She's always resourceful. By the way, she's never a joke. She's never the butt of any jokes. And it's weird how her and Mark were married, and yet I... Other than a very, very brief scene on a boat, I never get the impression that there is anything between them two. I never felt a single thing about her and Mark. And then, of course, the weird thing of Stephen being basically head over heels infatuated like a fucking 14-year-old boy. Whatever. And just, you know. And then she gets to become an avatar. Everybody was worried she was going to basically replace Moon Knight because they were teasing that, that Khonshu wanted her. Well, whatever. She didn't become Moon Knight, but she became another avatar. And uh, this one is my understanding. Uh, they, I guess they confirmed it later in a press release that she's the Scarlet Scarab, which is whatever. Um, which is a character in the comic books that is definitely not female. And doesn't look anything like what we saw on the show. So, yay. Pro- progress, I guess, right? But it's very stunning and brave because that's the first Arab superhero that we get. Even though we're about to get Miss Marvel. I, I don't know. I don't like. <sighs> anyway, you know, and so Layla comes in. She gets to she gets to be this avatar. She gets to be the Scarlet Scarab or whatever they're going to call her in the show because they'll probably change that too. Why not? And it's amazing. She gets some of the cringiest quote unquote reveals. I mean, these reveals are she comes out of this cave. She's got this cool suit on all of a sudden, and like somehow she already knows exactly how to use all of her powers, all of them, and she does this weird reveal where she reaches back behind real slowly, reaches both hands back behind her, and, like, whips her wings out. And and then, like, crosses them, and, like, and looks, looks directly into the camera with, like, a cool smirk on her face, like, yeah, it just got real. Think about that. Sometimes try to put yourself in position to think about 
what that scene looked like if it wasn't a show and it was just happening in reality. And you just happened to be over in the corner where no one could see you and you could see it. She literally walks out of this tunnel into this opening in this cave. Or, I'm sorry, into this room in the uh, uh, the pyramid. This big room. By herself. This is the point I'm trying to get to. She walks out of this hallway into this big room. She is in this room by herself. And she reaches back behind like she's performing for somebody and whips her wings out. Yeah, superstar. Can you imagine what that looks like if there were no cameras there? And then she looks off into the random distance with this cool smirk on her face. Yeah. I'm a superhero now. It is laughable. It is so hilarious when you, especially when you realize what that scene really looked like. It's not like she was doing this to sh- reveal herself to the enemy or to a bad guy. She's doing this to reveal herself to an empty room. <laughs> I mean, oh my God. It's so funny and cringy. And ridiculous. And then later, she's saving uh, uh, some some innocent innocent bystanders from the big the big finale punch up. And I say that because everything in the MCU is a world ending event. Everything is a world ending event. Um, they're going to destroy the world, whoever it is. And there's a big punch up. There's just always a big punch up at the end. And She's saving these people from, you know, you know, kind of collateral damage. She's trying to save them from, you know, becoming collateral damage. And this little, this little girl, of course, we're in Egypt, so she's a little Egyptian girl, looks up at her in awe and goes, are you a superhero? And she looks at her and goes, I am. Wow. This is someone who, by the writing, this is the script writing I'm talking about here, by the script writing, was very adamant with the with the Egyptian god that she was talking to, that I will not be a permanent avatar. This is just a temporary deal. I'm only doing this to help Mark, or whatever. Yet now, I am a superhero. Like, oh my god, that's so cringy and stupid. And it's like, there's times when you watch some of these shows, these MCU shows and movies, and it's almost like, did you forget what you just wrote, like, 20 scenes ago? Did you, or did did somebody else come in and write this and not read the script up to that point? Anyway, I just, it's, it's so ridiculous. And then somehow Layla already knows exactly what they need to do to uh, bind Amit to a human mortal form. Somehow she already knows the spells. I mean, she's been doing this for literally a hot minute. It would have been at least more believable if it looked like she was reading from a book that one of the other avatars gave her before they died. It would be more believable if Mark did it because he's been Moon Knight for a long time. It'd be more believable if it looked like her, her the, the Egyptian god that she's the avatar for actually took over. Like if her eyes glazed over because they did that effect a couple times when the, the gods were actually speaking directly through their avatars as opposed to their avatar speaking for them. But nope. She's very stunning and brave, perfectly powered, never really becomes the joke of uh, the butt of any joke at all. No, no, not her. Mm -mm. You don't understand. And and the show just, like I said, and I said it before, and I'm not trying to be gratuitous, but it just shits the bed by the end. And and I, I mean, I'm so done with Marvel. And I felt like I was, I felt like it, it after end game is like, boy, you know, I hope they didn't let all of the, you know, the, you know, the wind out of the sails or the, you know, the air out of the balloon or there's the cat out of the bag, blah, 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 you know, insert, insert funny analogy here. But I'm just so done with Marvel and I am hoping that Star Wars is not going to follow suit with the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, but I feel like the bait and switch is fairly high potential for being a reality, and um, yeah, so I don't know. Um, I'm sorry, I don't think Moon Knight's very good, 
If you don't know anything about Moon Knight, I think you'll enjoy at least parts of it. But if you really think about this show, if you really think about the writing, if you look beyond the surface, beyond face value, this show is so shallow. The writing is so shallow. Um, Oscar Isaac and Ethan Hawke are wonderful actors, and they do the best they can with this crappy script. And the, and then the and I'm and I'm only saying this because I haven't I haven't bothered to look it up because I'm so disillusioned by this show. But the actress who plays Layla, she's not a bad actress. She's not miserable to watch. Uh, she's not, you know, she's not Brie Larson scowling and smirking at people for, you know, two hours. But there's just nothing to this show. And and then the fact, and I hate to say this, I, I know they tease, they tease Jake Lockley, which is another personality of, of Mark Spector's, and they tease it as if it's a big, big problem, Jake Lockley, because, you know, he might be just literally a brutal, violent, serial killer type of, you know, personality like the literal polar opposite of Steven. You thought Mark was the opposite, but actually Mark's maybe just a five on the scale, and Jake Lockley's like a ten, where Steven is a total fucking zero. And I mean that in all of the ways you could imagine. But Moon Knight is in this show for an extraordinarily small period of time, for six episodes. I, I, I think someone even counted out like the screen time minutes, and it's like twelve and if I'm not going to get the big payoff character that I'm, you know, that the, the show... So in a way, this show is a bait and switch as well. Because you think it's about Moon Knight, <laughs> and there's not much Moon Knight in it. And, uh, of course, Moon Knight has to have his ass saved and by Stunning and Brave. And I just, I, I'm, I, I apologize. If you're listening to this and you feel like this is a painful episode to listen to, it's at least four times that to, to, to do this. Because I've, I've been sitting on this and trying to figure out if I, like I'm trying to decide, I don't want to come in here and be all angry and grumpy and ram back in my day, you know, and all that. And it's hard to talk about a show I really don't like, or there's no redeeming qualities to, because I don't want to just come in here and just whine and complain. But it just reflects how I feel about the greater MCU, the the, the Star Wars universe, basically anything Disney touches at this point, and that doesn't absolve any other studios of screwing things up but right now Disney is just on this absolute streak of terrible terrible output no I haven't seen the Doctor Str Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness although I've heard it's basically uh, Wanda Maximoff America Chavez in and featuring Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness um but other than Spider-Man No Way Home, I'm trying to remember the last time Marvel put something out that was genuinely entertaining, genuinely fun. Not perfect. I'm not looking for Scorsese or or Christopher Nolan. Jesus, just let me have fun. I just want to have fun when I watch this. I don't want to think about how ridiculous the writing is or how vapid and 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 ridiculous and stunning and brave this character is and well, why did they do that? Why was that necessary? I don't want to think about that. I just want to go see a movie and just go, that was fun. That was really fun. I haven't done that in a long time. Anyway, so I'm going to uh, wrap up my uh, my wine and cheese festival here. I do hope you enjoy the content. And uh, like I said, I did, um, for anybody who was paying attention, um, you won't see the podcast directly on the Facebook anymore. Uh, Facebook got rid of podcasting, so I'll be uh, sharing both YouTube and the Rumble video links on the Facebook page, because I don't want to do that with, uh, you know, Google Podcasts or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, because I don't know who has those. Not, not everybody has those, but YouTube's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty ubiquitous, and Rumble seems like it's getting there. I don't know. It's a cool platform anyway. I don't know that it's def it definitely doesn't have the traffic, but anyway. So hopefully I'll, I'm going to have more thoughts about this kind of stuff, and I'll probably talk about it at some point. But uh, until next time, take care and have a great day.
Thanks for listening. The Way of the Dad podcast is produced and recorded by, well, me, a stunningly average husband and father who appreciates all of the likes, shares, reviews, and support you give. If you would like to reach out, you can find the podcast on its Facebook page, and of course you can email me at wayofthedadpodcast at gmail.com. Come back next time as we continue to fearlessly dive into the depths of dadness.